what is going on YouTube, what is going on Kansas City, and what is going on everybody, and welcome to the Beat of KC. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an amazing guest today to talk football, but just not any type of football. We're going to be talking Kansas City Chiefs, and I want to take it a little bit further than that and talk a little bit about fantasy football. You know, the season's starting to come around, and I'm excited. Justin Dupengeiser, as most people call him, Dupe. What's going on, my friend? What's going on? I appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, man, I appreciate you having me. I'm uh, I'm excited to be here and talk a little Chiefs football and football in general. The season is right around the corner, so that's got me pretty fired up. You know, honestly, seeing Patrick Mahomes walk down that ramp again to go to, to training camp, that has me fired up. Just that alone, I'm ready to talk football. So we're going to dive into that, but before we do, uh, I want to kind of talk a little bit about you know, your background. So obviously you, you work at Arrow. Well, you cover Arrowhead live. You do a podcast, you write articles. Uh, you obviously do stuff for BFS sports media um, and, and really everything that's related to that. You also do a, a, a co-host show for there. Can you kind of tell us a little bit about that and then where they can find you on your social medias? Yeah, absolutely. So find me on Twitter um, at jdiz1617. Like you mentioned, I, I'm on uh, Arrowhead Live. We do I do a, a show with my co-host Caleb James called The Coach's Corner. And then my um, other show is called Ballin' Over Beers. Uh, I do that with a couple buddies. And, you know, the Arrowhead Live thing, the, the Coach's Corner, basically we cover everything Kansas City Chiefs. Um, we do film breakdowns on players. We have a uh, Cornell Powell breakdown. We have the new offensive line breakdown. We talk linebackers. Uh, we have a good breakdown on YouTube. You can find us. And then the other show is really based all on like fantasy sports and betting and stuff like that. The Bowling over beers show. So a lot of, a lot of fun with that. You know, I've coached football for, I'm going into my 18th season. Um, I've, I did four at the, the college level. And then uh, the other years, I, however many other years that is, I guess, at, at the high school level. So I've been I've been involved in football since I can remember and uh, been a Chiefs fan ever since I can remember. So it's all good getting to getting to talk Chiefs and, and fantasy. It's a good time, man. That's what's up. So is, is your football season approaching? Obviously, you know, here in the Midwest, uh, you know, as school starts, you know, we start into camp and, and get those kids back into camp and stuff. But are you guys firing it up as well? Oh yeah, man. We, so we've been doing like off season stuff, just like everybody else, seven on sevens, weight room stuff. And then our official season, our starts uh, August 13th. So we're, we're only oh, wow. a couple weeks away. Yeah. We're right around the corner here. That's awesome. So do you guys, op do you guys open up against somebody tough? Or are you kind of excited for who you open up against? Uh, what, what do you got there? Yeah. So it's been, it's been pretty crazy this, this off season, actually our, our schedule isn't even set yet. It's actually changed like three or four times already with different schools, like merging with schools and then dropping out. So we're still, we're still figuring out who our first opponent was going to be. We've had it locked in twice and now it's changed twice. So we're just going to wait and figure that out, I guess, down the road. Well, you know, you know I, I, I you know, <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know, I, I coached uh, high school baseball and, and I would probably be given the the speech right now. It doesn't matter who we're going to play. Yeah, we're going to show, right. I, you know what I'm saying? So, oh, yeah. For sure. But so with that being said, I'm, I'm excited to talk Chiefs. You know, we, we definitely uh, we definitely have seen training camp start. I think it's kind of weird that it started on a Saturday bleeding into a Sunday. I, I think it would have been cool to just see it start on a fresh Monday. But, um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, we're seeing some things come together. Obviously, the quarterbacks, some rookies show up, and then the full-on, full-blown stuff comes out. Um, who, who are you most excited about? Like, uh, as far as a position, what are you going to have your eye on? Um, you know, really kind of making sure that either they're coming together or the one that you're mostly concerned with, I guess you could say. Yeah, so I used to play quarterback, um, coached quarterbacks. I'm an offensive coordinator. Um, I have loved Patrick Mahomes since I watched, you know, him playing at Texas Tech. And then I watched him run for almost 500 yards before throwing the ball in the Super Bowl. So I could not be more excited to see how this offensive line gels together and protects the franchise, Mr. Patrick Mahomes, Mr. One five. It is literally probably the only thing that I'm the most um, concerned about, not even concerned, but just the most intrigued about, I guess, to watch, you know, I think that everything else can kind of come together, but the, the most important thing that Kansas city will do 
from here on out is protect Mahomes because if he's protected and he's healthy, the Chiefs are going to have a shot in every single game they play from here on out until Mahomes is gone from the Kansas City Chiefs 20 years from now, you know? For sure. And, you know, that's what's kind of awesome for you guys is because over there at Arrowhead Live and in your guys' podcast and, and really your visual YouTube version, you guys break down some of the best. Like, I joke with Caleb, I call him Dr. Film because he really just – you know, dissects what's going on. I have I have to come up with a, a nickname for you. I think I'm gonna call you coach. I think that's what I'm gonna have to come up with. But you know, you guys do tremendous stuff, and it's really uh, it provides that perspective that I think a lot of people are missing. And that's one thing that I really have started to pay attention to was the offensive line and your guys' breakdown with that. You know, when Caleb talks about um, and really you guys in general both talk about you know. Orlando Brown and really what's coming with that offensive line. I think that's huge because we did see such a tremendous hole. Like I always joke in the videos that I've put out that it's almost like this was held on my duct tape going into the Super Bowl, and it was really, really bad. So even with Kyle Long going down, I think you're seeing depth and you're really seeing that position being addressed in the offseason. Um, so I kind of do want to ask you because I was waiting to see how you would answer a lot of people do seem concerned with the cornerback spot, really the inexperience. Um, you have a lot of injuries and a lot of you're a lot of wishful thinking that players are going to be coming back healthy, like DeAndre Baker, you know, um, Mike Hughes, even having some injuries in the past. What are your thoughts on that cornerback spot? It is super interesting to see because kind of since Spagnola has been there, there hasn't been a huge priority in spending or in draft capital at the cornerback position. It's just not really something that they value for whatever reason. They, they, they value pass rush and defensive linemen far more than they do the cornerback position. And I think a lot of that also is helped by the fact that they have, you know, Tyron Matthew in the, in the back end that helps with that. Hopefully a fully healthy Juan Horn, Juan Thornhill coming back too, who his rookie year was just, you know, a, a stud, for the first, you know, full season, basically when he was healthy. And then, you know, last year, he even already mentioned kind of that he never really got back to hundred percent coming off of that ACL tear. So I think that, you know, with, with Thornhill, with Matthew, and even, you know, Daniel Sorensen, who, who obviously has a role on this team, um, they're, the corners are really helped out by those things. Now they're going to have to generate a little bit more pass rush uh, to help those corners out, but it, they just, they've never prioritized it. And I think a lot of that has to do with scheme. It's a very uh, scheme specific. They're looking for very specific players to play corner. They want longer guys. They want physical guys who can, who are smart, who can play in the quarter match type defense that they play in those matchup type zones who also can come up and play physical press man. You know, that you think about like a Charvarius Ward who they basically got for nothing from the Cowboys who's come in and played well. Bashad Breeland basically played for nothing for two seasons yeah. and was our best, our best corner. So I think that they're kind of thinking that they'll be able to step in with Ward. You got Legarius Sneed, who they'll probably bump to the outside. Then you can get guys like Fenton or Mike Hughes or DeAndre Baker, if he's healthy to step in. And I know they're pretty high on Bo Peep keys from some of the stuff that I've been reading. So I think they're kind of expecting with, with the, the amount of guys that they have in there that, you know, somebody's going to come in and take that role because I think with Snead, you got an absolute stud in the making at the position, right? He can play sure. inside, he can play outside. So it's really a matter of can Ward be okay and then find find that next guy. Yeah, you know, I'm excited for Keys. I, you know, the, I understand 100% that there's still a chance we could see him end up on the practice squad. But I think for me, he's one that I'm watching the most from a player perspective because. I really would like to see how this cornerback spot plays out. I think that there's a lot of variances we can see just because we know, you know, Spags likes to blitz even with some of those corners um, and, and use them in different ways. I mean, towards the end of the season, uh, you know, it, it was like Sneed was getting more sacks than, than Frank Clark. So I, I think that's what's kind of incredible is just the different packages he provides. Um, but, you know, on, honestly, I've been seeing, and this happens time and time again, I know you know, Anytime Chiefs fans hear a free agent, a big name free agent is available or a trade is possible for a big name player, Chiefs fans are all over it. This more recent one, we're hearing Chandler Jones from the Arizona Cardinals is not happy with his current situation, uh, especially with his contract. 
Um, and there's some things that obviously would have to go in to go get a Chandler Jones. What are your thoughts on really just the player in general? And then do you even see this as a possibility or is this just that still that uh, we're pre like real truly pre training camp kind of like hype moment? Yeah, I mean, Chandler Jones it has been a stud pass rusher in the league that kind of gets forgotten that nobody really kind of talks about. But the guy's played in, I don't know, if in maybe nine seasons or so now. And he only has two seasons where he's been healthy that he hasn't been in double digit sacks. Right. So his rookie year, he wasn't in his third year. He wasn't. And then he rattled off like five in a row where he had double digit sacks before last year where, where he was injured for the, pretty much the entire season. Yeah. So he, he, I mean, he's a phenomenal talent. He's one of the better pass rushers in the entire NFL. Now he's a $21 million cap hit this year and he's going to be needing a new contract, which is, that's kind of the, kind of the thing here. Now you also have Frank Clark, who it seems almost likely like this is going to be his, his last year in Kansas city, unless they can completely redo his deal where his cap hit isn't going to be one of the highest in the NFL, as far as an edge rusher is concerned. So yeah. do I think it's going to happen? No, I don't. I think that their move at defensive end was to bring in Alex Okafor, who's familiar with the system, who yeah. who can provide a little bit of an edge rush um, if needed. And they've already talked about Chris Jones playing some edge too. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if Tershawn Morton gets kicked out there a little bit too. He played an, you know on the edge in college. So they have options there. I'm excited to see, honestly, Taco Charlin come back healthy. He's somebody that last year, did a pretty good job in his role before he got hurt. You know, he's not going to be a guy that's going to play every single down and be a run stopper, but in pass rushing situations, he's got a little bit, um, a little bit of a uh, role on this team where he can get after the quarterback. So I, sure. I think that he'll be fine there. Yeah, most definitely. You know, and I think that again, you know, I would love to go see a Chandler Jones be added to this team. I mean, but in, in all reality, we have to understand. And, and I kind of sat back the other day and really evaluated we have a lot of big contracts that are coming up that are going to have to be addressed, especially if you want to stay competitive for a long time. Um, I mean, you have the Honey Badger, you have Orlando Brown. Um, I mean, you have Tyreek Hill that even is going to have to start being, you know, negotiated. And he definitely took a, a pay cut the last time. So you really have some big time contracts coming up. And unless some of these players are willing to come in and maybe do like one year deals or something like that. I just don't see these monster ads here in the near future until they lock up their players. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. I think the big thing everybody's kind of been waiting on is the honey badgers contract, right? The extensions talk is, it feels like it's kind of been like on the cusp of happening and just hasn't. So yeah. I'll be in really interested to see what happens there. Um, you know, there was the talks that the Seahawks want to make Jamal Adams the highest played player on their defense, which means he's going to get paid. And it would be nice for Kansas City to to get Matthew's contract done before that happens so they don't get absolutely crushed with, yeah. with that, you know. And I think that they're kind of different players, but it's still – it's kind of setting that that safety market of what it's going to be in the future. So, no, I don't see any huge ads um, coming here. In the future, you know, you never know with Brett Veach. He is a guy that is aggressive when he wants to make changes. He, he goes and does it. I mean, we've yeah. seen him do it. We've seen him do it. We've seen him do it after the defense a few years ago. We just see him do it with the offensive line. So if he does want something and he wants to change something, he's going to do it. But I for don't sure. see anything huge coming right up uh, right away. For sure. For sure. And, you know, I think that, um, again, I think that the honey badger will get locked up. And that's something that I think is, is very important for, you know, there for a while, there was this talk going around on, on social media, specifically Twitter, where a lot of people are trying to, I guess, figuratively evaluate leadership on the defense. And if you, if you really look at it, the honey badger is the leader on this defense. And I don't think you go out and just pay him because he is a leader. I think you pay him for the play that he puts on the field. He's a three-time first-team All-Pro. I mean, there's a lot that goes into that. And that, the biggest argument was how that translates into a Frank Clark. So what are your thoughts on how players are evaluated by their leadership? And, and does that go into really how players get paid? Or um, do you think that really has any factor when it, it comes time to make a trade even? Like, 
oh, we like that guy because he provides great leadership. What are your thoughts on that? I think that it, that it does play uh, somewhat of a role into um, evaluation or, you know, you think about when they were redoing the defense, the two moves that Beach really went out and made that were huge was trading for Frank Clark and trading for Tyron Matthew. And those are two guys that are pretty well known as leaders in the locker room and that they played with an edge, right? And it, you think about the way the defense has played, the defense has played with an edge basically since those guys kind of joined the team. And there, I mean, it's been pretty obvious. People talk about it all the time that you know, those guys are both the leaders in, in the locker room. You know, it's basically them, Mahomes, even Anthony Hitchens to a point um, is pretty vocal and, and has been named captain for a couple of years in a row now. And then, you know, you got Chris Jones. So those are the guys that, you know, Kelsey, obviously, but that's kind of like your core group that when they've gone on these runs, it's because of those guys have been the glue that's kind of held everything together. Now, when it comes to getting paid, Tyron Matthews is going to get paid because he's one of the most versatile safeties and the most productive safeties in the entire NFL. Like he is kind of the ultimate chess piece for Steve Spagnola in this defense. You know, you've mentioned about, you know, the, the pass rushing, how they send guys off the edge. And you think about even back to the AFC championship game, how many times um, Tyron Matthew and Legere Steed were in the backfield rushing Josh Allen, you know, sending guys off the edge there. He's the guy that can cover people in the slot. He's one of the best defenders out of the slot covering, you know, teams, number one wide receivers. He also can play as a deep high safety. He can play as the safety in the hole in a cover two scheme. You know, he can come down in the box if you need him to. He, yeah. he's, he's the ultimate chess piece. So that's why he's going to get paid because he's just a great football player. I agree. I agree for sure. And, and he's by far my favorite player. Like when I was, when he got drafted to the Cardinals, I was kind of honestly upset because I was like, please, I hope that there's a way that Chiefs can make this happen. Obviously that ended up translating down the road and we ended up getting them, but I'm a big Honey Badger fan. I think that, like, again, he provides such a versatile role where, you know, I, I'm, I've always been a fan of Eric Berry, but I think that this is a little bit different. Um, I think just, again, the versatility, the coverage that him the, having the ability to play corner and everything like that for sure. So with that being said, I know that you're an offensive coordinator and you guys have broke down Cornell Powell. We draft him this last year. We understand that. You know, Mahomes needs some more weapons. Uh, what are your are your honest thoughts uh, when it comes to his role this year? Um, and, and is there a chance that he is going to push one of these kind of well-known receivers maybe off the team or uh, maybe kind of force them down on the depth chart? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so Paul is an interesting guy, right? He ended up kind of having – his best year at Clemson, his last year, where obviously you think about Clemson, they have been a wide receiver factory for years now. So he was kind of, you know, he came in as a highly recruited guy out of high school, four-star prospect, and then kind of sat and couldn't really find his way until his last year where he really blew up um, and had a tremendous season. Now, coming into this year with Kansas City, to me, there's basically three guys for one position. It's Demarcus Robinson, Powell, and then Byron Pringle. So I, th I think still they're going to give McCole Hardman his shot first. He's the guy that they've, they've wanted to come along. He's the guy that they want on the field. Um, and I, I'm, I'm probably more of uh, a McCole Hardman guy than most people. I think most people are really kind of wanting to see more out of him. And I, I think that people often forget that he fits and does exactly what he's supposed to in, in this offense. He is a piece of this offense. He's not the guy and he doesn't have to be the guy. Um, even, you know, you think about like Sammy Watkins, even when Sammy Watkins is healthy, he's still only going to be the third or fourth option. So you think of a guy like Powell, he's not going to have to be the guy. He's going to have to be one of the guys that can step in and do some different things, right? He's a bigger physical receiver now he's not big in the sense that he's like six five he's only about six one but yeah. he's a physical receiver he's a post-up receiver he's built thick he's he's physical at the catch point which they don't have that you know Hill, Hill isn't that guy Hardman's not that guy obviously Kelsey is you know what he is he's a stud at the tight end position and can do a lot of different things but they don't have that other receiver and that's I think kind of where he he could step in and do the Sammy Watkins role where Sammy could really work the underneath routes he could be physical at the catch point. He was a physical runner after the catch. 
And that's kind of where he would be. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. I know they brought Demarcus Robinson back, but I, he might be somebody that kind of sees he's on the outside looking in. Now I know that they probably like him because he's, he knows the offense. He's familiar with Mahomes, and, and, but you got to remember he was also, they didn't bring him back right away. Yeah. You know, he could be a guy, then they, then they were trying to go out and get Juju Smith Schuster. It was reported and they were looking for out. So I, he could be a guy that's on the outside looking in. It was funny. Actually, the other day I tweeted out that I wouldn't mind Kansas city looking at uh, Anthony Miller or Christian Kirk to trade for, or yeah, they could I saw that. Being cut. and then the next day, the Texans ended up trading for Anthony Miller. And I was like, ah, oh, come on. You know, yep. they basically got him for free too. So I, I you know, it's going to be those guys competing for the spots and, and it, what it's going to come down to is they're just going to be a piece. Right. Yeah. And it might not be, Powell might not be until later in the year, even because you've seen receivers take time in Andy Reid's offense. So Most definitely, you know, it might be something where eventually he comes along, but I, I don't think it, he's going to be a huge impact early but I think he definitely is going to have a role on this team for sure. Well, and, you know, I think a lot of people tend to forget, too, that we did go out and sign Antonio, Antonio Callaway. And yep. Antonio Callaway could potentially really provide some some huge depth piece at this uh, receiver's position. So I agree with you. I went ahead and added DeMarcus to my fantasy lineup. Uh, you know, it's year round for for me. Um, and I went ahead and added him, even though I think there's a chance he might, like you said, be looking on the outside in. Um, I, I think that there's a lot that's, you know, riding on his ability to, yes, he know he's familiar with the offense, but I think that, you know, with what we've seen where miscues and, and route running at times, you know, his hands haven't always been as solid as, you know, some of the others. I definitely think that he is outside looking in and uh, I'm excited to see what happens with that. But that does lead me to this next piece with fantasy football. I'm really excited. Uh, you know, I, I always get the itch. We just went through, at least in my league, uh, we just went through the draft and then we went through free agency. And with mine, it's literally like you're the GM. You have contracts. You have, you know, money that you are available to spend on each player. And that's exciting. But it's a little bit different than, obviously, your traditional, like, snake draft and, and everything like that. When it comes down to the the snake draft traditional style, who is your number one pick? If you're going, if you're the first overall pick, who are you going to take this year? Number one overall. Yeah, I got the itch for fantasy too, just like you, man. We just did actually our draft order just got revealed and I actually had the fifth overall pick. But Ooh, I like it. I like it. <laughs> I wish I had the first, to be honest, because I think it's Christian McCaffrey. I mean, I think that's pretty, pretty much the consensus. He's just going to get so much volume, and in fantasy volume is king. He's going to get every touch out of the backfield, catching and running, plus touchdowns. So I think he, he's pretty much the consensus guy, and it, it'll be hard to go away from him. That makes me feel really good because I do have him on a contract, and last year was a lot was riding on McCaffrey, and we saw what happened to him. Yeah. So you can only imagine how my season went. Uh, <laughs> let's just so let's just say it was over when he went down. But yeah. I'm, I am excited. I am excited for uh, for McCaffrey, most definitely. Um, but that does kind of translate a little bit into who his quarterback could be right now, and that's, I believe, Sam Darnold. What are your thoughts on Sam Darnold coming over from the Jets to the Panthers? I'm pumped. So, what are your thoughts? I mean, we've seen we've seen uh, Adam Gase just kill quarterbacks in the past, and I think Darnold might have been his latest victim, right? He, I think getting away from Gase and going to Joe Brady, who has proven to be just a tremendous offensive coordinator. Last year, you know, he's got Teddy Bridgewater at the helm and it produces almost three wide receivers with over a thousand yards. I mean, Darnold was still, you know, a top five draft pick and one of the, you know, highest touted guys coming out of that draft is a quarterback prospect. So I'm, I'm really interested to see kind of what he can do. And, and on that matter, I love DJ Moore this year too. Like yes. I think, you know, you can get, if you're talking best ball drafts and stuff, if you want to, you know, take a flyer on Sam Darnold late and, and see what he does. I got no issues with that because I think he could end up being a pretty interesting guy. You know, we've seen Ryan Tannehill get away from Gase and be successful um, and I think that really Darnold could not be going into a better situation. He's got playmakers around him. He's got a tremendous offensive coordinator. Um, and it, it should be all systems go for him. 
for sure. And I think with the division down there getting a little bit weaker because Drew Brees, Drew Brees is no longer there. I mean, and then you find out Michael Thomas is going to be out because of surgery, I believe. Um, and so there's really some question marks there with Jameis Winston leading the helm there down in the New Orleans. We know what you're getting in Tampa. Um, and I always forget the last team because it's the Panthers. And who's the other one? Falcons. Yeah, yeah. So, well, then we know what's going on there. I mean, they still have a decent squad, I guess you could say. But, you know, I, I think if if the Panthers come out hot, there's a chance uh, they could, you know, definitely be fighting for that second spot there in that division. So I'm super excited for, for that and what they got going on there. Um, so if you – my style when it comes to that snake style draft, I always change it up every year because I always say I'm going to do it this this way this year, and it ends up biting me sometimes. Uh, do you like to go running back heavy first? I, I'm giving all your secrets away, so if anybody's watching and you want to know Justin's <laughs> secrets, here they are. Um, but do you typically try to, like, split it where you go running back uh, receiver, or are you trying to go, like, running back heavy with those elite running backs, knowing that the, the receiver's position is very deep? How do you kind of approach your, your, uh, I guess, snake style draft? Um, so in the past couple of years, I've been the guy that doesn't draft running backs. <laughs> so really? okay. I, yeah, I've been, I've been pretty heavy with the wide receiver position. I think last year I had the one eleven, and I actually took Kelsey. I took Kelsey with the one eleven. So I, I took him early and I, I do like the idea. If you have one of the later picks of taking Kelsey in that situation because I think it just gives you such a massive um, leg up on all of your opponents just because of what he provides the tight he's so much better than everybody at the tight end position you know Waller and Kittle are are good right but you know we've just seen Kelsey go for his fifth straight a thousand yard year he was the second leading receiver in in the entire NFL you know it's just unbelievable what he's doing and you look at what Kansas City is going into again this year he's going to be just a volume monster and that's what he is right between hill and kelsey those guys are gonna get so many targets so i do like that early if like and this is where i'm kind of thinking with the one five this year it might change i might try to get one of those top running backs and then and then kind of see where we are from there so i definitely get the value of of getting those two running backs early because i feel like at, at that position it does kind of fall off of a cliff pretty quickly as, as far as talent and volume is concerned and now with cam Akers, you know being injured the running back market just is even thinner at this point for sure for sure and you know that's i mean i tried to think uh you know of who could potentially i always like to personally sit down and like all right who can go here to here and ezekiel elliott obviously wasn't the greatest last year. I mean, and let's just be real. That that offense, when Dak went out, it just seemed like their their morale was deflated completely. So Zeke takes it at, at really kind of takes it on the chin. Uh, a lot of people attack him for, for his size. Um, and there was a lot of question marks about that. We see him in the offseason chisel down to basically his freshman year Ohio State size. I think the guy's definitely got a chip on his shoulder. Where do you kind of envision Ezekiel Elliott going this year? Um, when it comes to fantasy football, is he still considered a first rounder for you? Or do you think he's kind of like that kickback uh, snake style of uh, like maybe right there in the beginning of the second? No, he's, he's, he's a top guy for me. I think that he could finish as high as the second overall, you know, okay. you know, he has a ceiling that he could be the first, like you said, with the Dak thing, once Dak went down, that entire offense changed. They had offensive line issues and now they're getting, uh, three of their offensive line starters back you know they're getting Colin Smith and um, Travis Frederick back all three starters and you know like you said he trimmed down um, but the big thing to me is just the deck the efficiency in the offense is going to be back they're going to be scoring touchdowns you want players and offenses that score a lot of points because they have a chance to to get those touchdowns and he's going to get that now the, the thing that you always worry about him is, is Dak Prescott going to poach some of his touchdowns when he gets to the goal line with Prescott's ability to run. But yeah. I still think that, again, the volume is going to be there. If he stays healthy, he, he has a ceiling to finish in the, in the top five or even first overall. I mean, I, you could definitely make an argument there for me. And now you got Amari Cooper um, on, the, on the pup list. So maybe some of those touches that might have gone to Cooper are now going to go to Zeke for that too. So 
I, I definitely like him. He's definitely one of the players in consideration for me at 1.5 when I'm going to be drafting. So I like him a lot. For sure. That's, that's pretty cool. And, and uh, so we see that again, receivers are a hot commodity, but they're, they can be had pretty late in, in a lot of this draft. Um, with Justin Jefferson performing the way he has, do you think that he sneaks into the first round this year? Because I know last year a lot of people were um, kind of like, hmm, we're not really sure where he could go, but we know that he's a rookie. Um, and he comes out and it just shines like nobody's business. What are your thoughts as far as him sneaking into the first round? I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame anybody for it. Um, I don't think that I have him quite there yet. But, I mean, if you're talking ceiling, which is what you want to draft for, right? You want to draft players who you think are going to have monster years. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility for Jefferson to finish as wide receiver one, right? You think about the Vikings offense and what they do, they funnel it to three guys. It's Dalvin Cook, it's Justin Jefferson, and it's Adam Thielen. Those are the three mm-hmm. guys that touch the football in that offense. And those are, those are like fantasy dreams. When you know where the ball is going, that's great. What's tough is when you get in situations like, you know, you had in New England for years where you you, how do you trust any running back really James White maybe just because he catches the most but you never know which running back it's going to be um, you know offenses that spread the ball around it, it makes it tough for fantasy but when you know you have guys that are going to touch the ball and are guaranteed to touch it you love that situation Jefferson's no different he, he's he's a stud he's a top five guy for me for sure um, I'd probably wait till the second form because I have guys like Tyree Kill you know, if, if Adam Roger, or, um, Adam, Aaron Rodgers and, and Devontae Adams play, I think Adams is in the top digs, but he's right there in that conversation, three, four, five area. You know, I think Calvin Ridley could end up leading the NFL in targets over in Atlanta, uh, just with the way that there's really nobody else there. I know they just drafted Kyle Pitts, but man, there's not a second receiver that you really feel confident with over there. So, yeah, you know, Jefferson's sure. right in that conversation as the top five guy. Yeah, that's and that's something that, you know, I talk to buddies at work all the time about fantasy football, and that's a debate we've had multiple times on does he squeak in because you do have guys like Travis Kelsey and, and, you know, you have the unknown of Devontae Adams, like who's going to be throwing to him? And, and, you know, there for a while, even Michael Thomas, like is he going to be able to still perform with Jameis Winston? But then we find out his injury. So I I think a lot of those guys are going to start to squeak in to that first round. And like you said, I – You know, if someone did that, I wouldn't be upset either to see that happen. But, um, you know, you kind of mentioned the New England Patriots rotation that they often have there at the running back position. This year, the Houston Texans seem to have that. And with the unknown of what's literally going on down in Houston, I mean, you have Mark Ingram, you have Rex Burkhead, you have David Johnson. Um, I'm pretty sure they have two others that I didn't even name. Uh, Are you taking any if at all possible running backs down there in Houston, or are you kind of staying away from that uh, crazy train? No, I'm not touching anything down there. It's just so unknown right now. Like I, I was absolutely stunned when I read the report today that Deshaun Watson is reporting to camp, but still wants to be traded. Like he's just showing up so he doesn't get fined. I, I couldn't believe that. And I can't believe that he's not on the, the commissioner's exempt list at this point. Um, you know, it's just, obviously they might just be waiting for the legal, situation to play itself out before they do anything which I guess that's what kind of what you need to do um but that is such a crowded backfield and they're so really if if Watson doesn't play they're so void of any talent there it's it's pretty bad now if I had to choose it would obviously be David Johnson I still think that he's got enough in the tank and, and he's a good enough um pass catcher that he should be fine you know best ball drafts I've taken him some but in a season long I, I don't think I would touch any of those guys. Yeah, for sure. Do you think that when the season progresses, I guess, like more into training camp and we get closer to the very end, do you think that there's a chance that one of those guys gets cuts and cut and then finds himself on a pretty good team? Like, I mean, the names that are in that in that backfield, I mean, they're pretty significant, but they're definitely all older. Um, what do you, you know, do you think that happens with one of them? and Or do you think they just stick with everything they got and, ride this out because of just everything that just nonsense going on down there. You, I mean, you always see that kind of right in training camp where you're always kind of like, Oh, wow. I can't believe that guy kind of got caught. They brought him in, you know, thinking maybe he'd be a piece of the, the puzzle at places. So, you know, that, that is a very crowded backfield and maybe, you know, somebody like the Rams who just lost Cam Akers that we talked about, 
they go through training camp and they go, okay, you know, Xavier Jones and Jake Funk aren't the guys <laughs> that we yeah. thought that they were going to be as backups. Let's, let's call over to Houston maybe and see if we can snag a Philip Lindsay from them for, you know, late round draft pick or something before he gets caught yeah. or something like that. You know what I mean? So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if something that like that happens, you'll kind of always see those situations where guys get caught that you're, that you really don't think might get caught in that, or, you know, somebody makes a, a surprising trade late that they think and, and injuries happen too. You know, no, you never know. Somebody gets injured during training camp. Now all of a sudden those guys might become a little bit more valuable. For sure. You know, I was always hoping that Philip Lindsay would find his way to, to the chiefs. I know he's another one that's down there now that you mentioned it. And, you know, I was kind of hoping that he would, you know, consider at least coming to Kansas city and maybe filling a spot, but I do like our running backs that we have, you know, going into the camp. I like, you know, I, I think Jarek McKinnon definitely provides you value. I think Daryl Williams obviously is going to be your, your downhill runner. And then Clyde obviously is very versatile. Um, so with that being said, where do you kind of envision Clyde going this year for fantasy football? Do you think he's kind of uh, – has he worked his way up? Or do you think a lot of people are going to start really buying into what this offensive line, like the revamp of the offensive line is going to help him out as just as much as anybody else? Yeah, right now I think his ADP is like running back 15, which okay. to me is is pretty pretty low. You're getting insane value there to me. You're getting a running back who is going to be the number one guy in one of the best offenses in the entire NFL with an entire new offensive line. Now, he was hurt three games last year and still had 1,100 scrimmage yards. Like, that's that's pretty good. He was, he was 0.3 – I want to make sure – I think it was 0.3 points away from being running back 10 last year. So mm-hmm. Kareem Hunt was running back 10 last year at like 13.5 or something like that. And, you know, he was only 0.3 points away from that at this point. You know, last year he had 24 rushes inside the 10 yard line that only two of them resulted in up in touchdowns. Yeah. That's the same number that Jared Goff had as <laughs> his touchdowns with rushes from inside the 10. And, and the Chiefs had the 31st um, win block rate for offensive line in the NFL. So they were second to last in win block rate when it comes to, to running the football. So to me, that's going to change. He's going to get more rushing touchdowns, which lead to more fantasy points. The Chiefs have already talked about him being a part of the passing game. To me, he right now is somebody like in best ball. I've been doing a lot of best ball drafts. I am buying him in every single, single situation I can have. He's a guy I could see finishing inside the top five for running backs. I really think that you're going to just, Darrell Williams is still going to get touches um just because he's he's good and reliable and third down he's a good pass blocker he's good hands he's a good short yardage guy but I think that they want to make Clyde the guy I think that now they have the offensive line to make him the guy and he's going to be more involved in the pass game sign me up give me every single share that I can right now because if, if if he's going to keep falling to the second and, and sometimes the third round whew, I'll take that all day that's insane sure. value to me for sure and uh you know I think with with, with the way the Chiefs often are, you know, I don't want to say that they're always up on teams significantly, but I think this year, the if you do see them up more, I, I could see them pulling Clyde and, and letting some of the, like the Daryl Williams and, um, you know, even Jarek McKinnon get a little bit more touches in some aspects. But I definitely think Clyde's going to eat this year. I think he's got it. I think he personally has a chip on his shoulder. He got injured late last year and, you know, they brought in Le'Veon Bell and I think he, even though he won't openly admit it, I think he kind of felt like that was a little bit of an offensive thing going out and getting him. So I think he's definitely going to come out and uh, I'm excited to see what Clyde does. And I'm definitely looking at him in fantasy, you know, once I get, get into some of these drafts that I sign up for, for sure. But um, so my next question is going to be about the quarterback spot. And it seems like everybody has a different view on the quarterback spot, except for the fact that they think Patrick Mahomes is first. I'll speak for everybody on that. Um, but, uh, where do you typically look to start adding at the quarterback spot? Cause last year I saw some crazy stuff, people adding Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, even Russell Wilson, there in the third round. Uh, what are your thoughts on where you start looking for a quarterback? Yeah. So in your traditional leagues, I think that you can, you can wait on, on quarterback, um, it, it, it's really tough if you take a guy, a quarterback in the third, because you're giving up so much value at the other positions where, you know, there, there's not a ton of discrepancy between QB six and QB 12, whereas, you know, RB five to RB 15, 
could end up being significant, you know, yeah. or, you know, wide receiver, whatever, you know, you're, it, you just, you tend to lose so much value if you start reaching too much um, for quarterback and, and really with quarterback, you really want to try to find the quarterbacks that add that rushing value. I think that you do yourself a very big disservice if you aren't finding quarterbacks who um, at least give you some sort of floor with rushing ability. It's, it's really tough for a guy like, uh, say, you know, a Matt Ryan, who's been a very productive fantasy quarterback. Um, I don't think he's been outside the top 12 at all in the last three years as far as fantasy production, but it's really hard for him to make up um, points for, to a guy like Josh Allen, who's going to run the ball five times a game and give yeah. you 35 yards. He, he's already three and a half points behind just right there. Yeah. So, you know, the, the, find the rushing quarterbacks, you know, find them later. If you, if at all possible, um, you know, even this year, a guy like a Jalen hurts who he's going to have that rushing floor built in, you know, it, that's it's, my guy. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Then you, don't, you, you don't want those, the, the Deshaun Watson rumors to come true to go down in Philly. Do you? <laughs> no, no. Cause that I'm, would ruin his chances. Yeah, you know, I'm a. Uh, that's one of the games that I'm looking forward to the most on the Chiefs' schedule as as just a fan. Um, I'm a big Jalen Hurts guy. I think he he represents very well off the field, but I think he performs on the field. And I think now that he hopefully I, I don't want to give it all to him yet, but hopefully he's the starter there. And I think we're going to see a little bit of of talent going on, um, especially with them going drafting Devonta Smith and uh, you know Jalen Rieger is coming back and. Zach Ertz is still there. Dallas Goddard's still there. I mean, they got some weapons, and hopefully that offensive line stays healthy. Running back is always a question mark there, but I'm excited for him. I, I'm hoping that he comes out and has a, has a year. We know that division is by far the weakest in all of the NFL, so um, it'd be cool. I, I'm excited to see what he does, and that's definitely what I'm going to be looking at. But I think, you know, quarterback is such an extremely deep – now in the NFL, extremely deep because, like, Tyler Murray – I mean, the list goes on and on and on, really, honestly. Um, but then you really start getting the bottom of the barrel. I think Jared Goff is going to struggle this year. What are your thoughts on that up there in Detroit? That is an offense I want no pieces of. I think that is just such a gross situation. Jared Goff could barely court, play quarterback, you know, outside you know, of having Sean McVay designing everything he can from him and being in his ear, basically. I, I, they don't have any talent on the outside at wide receiver. I mean, maybe TJ Hawkinson because yeah. he's the guy that could probably get all the targets if you like that. But even that right now, if I don't get one of the top three tight ends and Kelsey Kittle or Waller, I'm just going to wait and take a flyer on some, some later guys. For sure. For sure. And, and, you know, I think that that is just a train wreck, you know, they might be chewing off kneecaps like Campbell saying and doing all that crazy stuff up there, but uh, it's going to be tough. You know, I was even really way down on them when thinking Rogers was going to come back, but even with Rogers not coming back and um, you know, who knows throwing to him, probably Jordan love. I still just see them finishing the bottom of that uh, division. So, um, but yeah, it's going to be incredible to see. Man, I, I tell you what, I, I'm excited for fantasy football, and I can honestly talk to you for days about this. But, Justin, I appreciate you coming on the channel uh, and at least talking with me. Um, hopefully we can do this again before maybe we really – right when fantasy football starts diving in deep and we can just talk about this stuff again. Maybe I, I'll have a few drafts. You have a few drafts going on, so we'll, we'll talk about it then. But, Justin, I appreciate you coming on. And one more time before we sign off, can you let them know where they can find you? Yeah, man. No, it was great being on. I appreciate you having me. I love what you're doing here. So we'll definitely, we'll definitely get back and uh, talk some more fantasy football and chiefs football for sure. But find me on Twitter at jdiz 1617. Um, you can be on the lookout on YouTube uh, called the coach's corner, the one for Arrowhead live. And then over at border field sports uh, called balling over beers. So we got a couple of YouTube shows you can check us out on. Awesome. I'm going to definitely have to dive in on the uh, balling over beers for sure to make sure that I'm up on my stuff. So I appreciate it again. As always, you guys know how I wrap this out. I appreciate checking out the beat of KC. And as always, have a good day.